Now, if we look into more detail what we are going to do now, the projectile motion, uh, that involves the three vector quantities, acceleration, velocity, and displacement or position. Now, let's look into more detail these three. How do I determine their signs? You know, my experience is that whenever somebody goes wrong in a problem on projectiles, it's usually because they had the sign wrong. So one must watch out for that sign before you do anything. Now I think, let's maybe start by this, looking in particular at when is displacement positive or negative. And then after that we look at when is velocity positive or negative, or when is acceleration positive or negative. Let's start with displacement. Now I've said previously that a vector quantity is specified by direction and magnitude. But displacement and position are slightly more demanding than your usual vector quantity in the sense that if you would now say now for instance you've been abducted and you get hold of a cell phone and you find the police and you say, can you please come and fetch me? I've got a displacement or a position of five kilometers north. They wouldn't have the faintest idea where to start looking for you. If, however, you said, I'm five kilometers north of the school or five kilometers north of the house, they would know exactly where to find you. What is the difference? I have specified a reference point, five kilometers north of the house or north of the school. I've got a reference point where you can start. So when we look at displacement with projectile motions, and you have to specify displacement, you also need a reference point first before you can specify what is the displacement. Now, a very popular type of question when we deal with um, when we deal with projectiles, is that you have you stand on the edge of a high building. Now I've got here a very fashionable, very high building. Um, I'll show you just now, um, and you are one of those very brave people that stand on the edge of this high building. You actually lean over the edge and you throw a stone vertically upwards and it falls back past you to the ground. Remember now that I've said that we are just going to look at motion in a straight line. Although when we make a drawing of that motion, we very often split the up and the down slightly. It's not as though it splits when it goes up and down, but in the drawing we split the two so that we can just distinguish clearly between the going up and the coming down. Otherwise it's just one line and you can't figure out which is which. So if you now have this displacement that you want to measure on a high building. Now let me just show you here on this picture. There is now the high building, and first of all, before you do anything, you decide on a direction. Remember what I said about vector quantities? You choose a direction as positive. Up is positive because this object is going to start moving upwards, and therefore we prefer to choose up as positive, not because up is my favorite, but I think it makes sense in this case. And down is negative, and then here, is the ground. So now you lean over the edge and you remember what I said that it's good practice to have the starting point as the reference point. And when this object, if that now first moves up and then it comes down, then if we now look at the picture again, it goes up and it comes down, remember, actually along exactly the same straight line, but we are now just dis going to separate them. Now, if you now look at the displacement while it is going up, what is happening there is 
Displacement is normally defined as the straight line from the reference point, which is there, to where the object is. So suppose the object is now busy moving upwards. When it is at that point, and you draw a line from the reference point to where it is, that arrow is going to point upwards. If the object is there, still going up, and you draw an arrow from the reference point, it's going up. If it's there and you draw an arrow from the reference point, it's going up. Do you notice that all of these arrows are pointing in the positive direction and therefore the displacement is positive, positive, positive. Now it turns around and it comes back. Okay, when it is at that point, the arrow drawn from the reference point to where it is, is positive. If it's there, the arrow drawn from the reference point to where it is, is positive. What can I conclude from this? That whether the object is busy going up or whether it's busy coming down, the displacement remains positive because the arrow drawn from the reference point is positive. Can I summarize that? Oh, yes. While the object is on the positive side of the reference point, on the positive side of the reference point, the displacement is positive, whether it's going up or whether it's coming down. It doesn't matter what it's, it might be hanging there in mid-air if that is possible. The displacement will then also be positive because the arrow drawn from the reference point will be pointing in the positive direction. So it's really as simple as this. While the object is on the positive side of the reference point, the displacement is positive. Right, but now it's back at the reference point. What is the displacement now? Zero. There's no line that I can draw between the reference point and where it is. It's zero. The moment it passes the reference point, now it's there. And you draw an arrow from the reference point to where he is. It's down in the negative direction. If it's there, it's down in the negative direction. Down in the negative direction. Till it hits the ground, it will be negative. You know, it might be a bouncing ball, and it might bounce back. So when it's there, what is the displacement? Down, drawn from the reference point. If it's there, drawn from the reference point, it's down, down. So all of these displacements, if we can summarize that then, all of the displacements that are below the reference point are negative displacements. All the displacements on the positive side of the reference point are positive displacements. Right, let's summarize this quickly. Whenever you've got a displacement on the positive side of the reference point, that displacement will be positive no matter what it is doing. If you've got a displacement on the negative side of the reference point, the displacement is going to be negative no matter what it's doing. Right, that is crucial to remember. The next vector quantity that we will come across in this chapter will then be uh, velocity. Now, what about the sign of velocity? I think let's maybe just first think about everyday life experiences. Say now you're sitting on the, uh, at the bus stop, waiting for the bus, and you're bored. Um, so what can you do now? All right, observe the cars that pass in the street in front of you. Some cars will be going towards your left, and some cars will be going towards your right. You can choose any direction as positive once again. Let's say we choose right as positive, left is negative. Then it means all the cars traveling in the positive direction have got positive velocities. All of the cars traveling in the negative direction, cyclists, anything going in the negative direction will have a negative velocity. It's really as simple as this. The sign of the velocity is determined by the direction in which it is busy moving. If it's busy moving in the positive direction, it's got a positive velocity. If it's busy moving in the negative direction, it will have a negative velocity. Now, what about the sign of the velocity when we have a 
projectile. Again, we've got our building, right? And we must just get the floor first. Okay, there's the ground and there is our building. So now once again, you stand on the edge of the building and it goes up and it goes down towards the ground and it hits the ground there. Remember, up is positive, down is negative. What did I just say about the velocity? The sign of the velocity is the same as the sign of the direction in which it's busy traveling. So while it is going up, its velocity is positive. When it's at the highest point, the velocity is zero. And when it's coming down, the moment it turns around and it starts moving in the negative direction, the velocity is negative, velocity is negative. Right, so in other words, velocity is positive no matter what the displacement does, and the velocity is zero, and then the velocity is negative no matter what the displacement does. That is then velocity. While it's traveling upwards, velocity will be positive. While it's going downwards, velocity will be negative. As simple as that. And now the third quantity that we are dealing with is acceleration. What about the sign of the acceleration? Ah, right at the start, we have already discussed that. You do remember that we said throughout the motion, the gravitational acceleration is going to be downwards all the time. So whether this object is going up at the highest point or coming down throughout this motion, the acceleration is going to be down. But we have selected, for this problem, we have selected down as negative. So what does that mean? Throughout this motion, the acceleration for this problem now is going to be minus 9.8, minus 9.8, minus 9.8, minus 9.8 meters per second squared till it hits the ground. That then takes care of the acceleration. But there's something else about acceleration that I would just love to, uh, I mean, this now sounds like just believe me, don't understand it. I want you to understand acceleration. And that's why I'm going to explain it again with something that we experience every day. Let's again sit at the bus stop, observing those cars passing by. Now again, remember we said to the right, positive, to the left, negative. But now some of those motor cars will be speeding up, you know them, some of them will be speeding up and some will be traveling at a constant velocity, some will be slowing down. What is the sign of their accelerations? I know it's not the projectile, but I think this will make us understand exactly what acceleration is and what the sign of acceleration means. Now, the rule is this, whenever an object is speeding up, it happens because the velocity and the acceleration are working together. They work in the same direc direction, they are cooperating. So in other words, if you see a car speeding up and its velocity is positive, you know, oh, the acceleration is working along, so that must also be positive. If you see a car going in the negative direction and it's going faster, it's speeding up, ah, its acceleration is working in the same way, it's working along, then if the velocity is negative, the acceleration is also negative. You see, some people believe that if something has got a positive acceleration, it goes faster and if it's got a negative acceleration, it slows down. No, 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 definitely not. You see that car going in the negative direction speeds up. It's got, it's got a negative acceleration, but it's speeding up because it's going in the negative direction. Now what about slowing down? So if you see a car moving in the positive direction and it slows down, it means it slows down because the acceleration is working against the velocity. If the velocity is in the positive direction, acceleration is opposing it, it's in the negative direction, and that's why it's going slower. In other words, if the velocity is positive, acceleration is 
negative when it slows down. What about that car that is going in the negative direction? Well, if it's going in the negative direction and it slows down, the acceleration must be opposing it, so the acceleration must be positive. You see, it's got a positive acceleration, but it's slowing down. Velocity is negative, acceleration is positive, and that's why it's slowing down. So the rule is really as simple as this, that whenever you observe any object that is speeding up or slowing down, if it's speeding up, you can assume that the acceleration has got the same sign as the velocity. They are either both positive or they are both negative. But if an object is slowing down, it will always be that if the velocity is positive, acceleration is negative. If velocity is negative, acceleration is positive. They are opposite in sign.